Sabbath, we just want to give honor and praise to God, the one who is able to keep us from falling. Amen. Real simple song says, I just want to praise you forever, all day long, Lord. We just want to praise you because you've been so good to us.
Good morning. Good morning, church, and happy Sabbath. We are so delighted to be together once again. God has granted us an opportunity to come together in his holy and righteous name. And for that, we are grateful. Hallelujah. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. Our call to worship this morning is quite simple. We are thankful to be together as a family, both near and far. We praise God for the opportunity to come together, both near and far. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God of grace, we are a people gathered together in your name. In your name, we pray, we sing. In your company, we find peace, God. Bless each person that has come to worship you today, that has come to be in your presence right here this morning, God. With the knowledge that they are going to be heard, Jesus, help us to hear your call to freedom ringing out all over this earth. We thank you for another Black History Month. We thank you for an opportunity to unite as one, as family, as friends, we praise and worship you this morning. Be in the midst of our service. Be in the midst of where our listeners are right now, both on Facebook and Zoom. Just touch them, God. Let them know that you are with them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Our opening selection this morning uh, is a great hymn, Immortal, Invisible, God only wise, in light inaccessible, hid from our eyes. Most blessed, most glorious. Amen, amen. We want you to sing along with us this morning. The words will be up on the screen. We invite you to lift up your voices unto the Lord right there where you are. Amen. Amen, amen. God only wise, enlightened 
inaccessible, hid from our eyes. Most blessed, most glorious, the ancient of days, almighty, victorious, thy great name we praise. Unresting, unhasting, and silent as light, nor wanting, nor wasting, thou rulest in might. Thy justice like mountains, high soaring above. Thy clouds which are fountains of goodness and love. To all life thou givest, to both great and small. In all life thou livest, the true life of all we blossom and flourish like leaves on the tree and wither and perish but not change it thee great father of glory pure father of light thine angels adore thee all veiling their sight oh lord we would render oh help us to see tis only the splendor of light hideth We thank you for another Sabbath day that you have brought us together in one accord. And as we celebrate you, O oh God, we celebrate the light and the love that you have unfold on each and every one of us. We ask you, O oh God, as we pour out our petitions to you this day, O oh God, that you will just grant our petitions, O oh God. Bring us it together in one accord in one mind and with one purpose. You have promised that wherever there are two or three gathered in your name, you will be there. And we are dependent upon your word. We're dependent upon you, O oh God, because we know, O oh God, there's only truth with you, O oh God. We know, O oh God, that we know there is truth in your word and there is truth in your law. So as we walk in your word and as we keep your law, your law, oh God, prosper our hands, prosper everything that we do, oh God, because it is you, oh God, that we give the glory. Glorify yourself, oh God, today as we worship you. We will all pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 sing this song. We've come. Let's say it one more time. We've come, We've come this 
this time praise god oh, praise yeah. god and and now we are here i'm here to welcome our, our beloved members of the philadelphia church of universal brotherhood and our visitors those who are worshiping with us on zoom and those who are worshiping us with us on facebook welcome to you we are delighted that you have chosen to worship with us today. And our prayer is that God will give you the blessing that we all seek. Each one of us come with our own cups and the Lord is there to fill our cups. And so this morning, 
welcome as we all join together and lift our hearts and, uh, and our voices, giving praise and thanks to our God who deserves our praise. And now we want you to uh, accept our, we uh, our welcome in song, which were presented by Sister Lavelle. Welcome visitors. The song says, Lord, we welcome you in this place. Visitors, you are so welcome in this place. Amen. Hallelujah. Philadelphia welcomes you. At this time, we'll have our affirmation. Just uh, follow along, it'll be up on the screen. We're asking everybody to do it with vigor and do it with enthusiasm. We're asking for everyone's participation. God be praised. This is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. O oh, almighty God, thy will be done this day. Today is a day of pleasant surprises, prosperity and fulfillment. I will continually give thanks for this wonderful day and blessings shall follow blessings. Health shall follow health. Prosperity shall follow prosperity. Miracles shall follow miracles and wonders shall never cease. I believe, I receive, I do believe. God be praised. Amen. Amen. I hope everyone is just excited about giving God some praise.
Trouble don't last always. Praise God for that. Well, my beloved, it's time for us to return our tithes and offerings to our God. But I'd like to share with you something that has always blessed my heart. Every time I read it, I feel inspired because in, in First Chronicles chapter 29, David let, um, gives a long uh, dissertation on all the things that he has done in preparation for pre uh, building the new temple unto God, because God said, make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among you, you know, so you may worship me. And they got all the gold and the silver and everything. The people just brought everything. And he himself did a whole lot of giving. And then he's talking to God about it. He's really uh, exalting. You know, he's, he's uh, really impressed with what happened. And he said on in, chap, in chapter 29, verse 13 and verses 13 and 14, now therefore, our God, we thank thee and praise thy glorious name. But who am I and what is my people? that we should be able to offer so willingly after this sort. This is where he shows his wisdom. He says, for all things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. I love that phrase. All things come of thee, O Lord. He was wise enough to recognize that he's got all this wealth around him and it all came from God. And whatever is, whatever your situation is this morning, whatever we have, it all came from God. And so uh, he has told us to return to him, his tithes and, and an offering. And so at this time, I invite you to join us as we do that. There's three ways um, that we can return our tithes and offerings to God at Philadelphia Church of Universal Brotherhood. Three ways. The original way, the uh, by mail, uh, Philadelphia Church of Universal Brotherhood, PO Box 642, Rockville Center, New York, 114. Five seven zero. Then uh, there is the cash app with uh, cash app PCUB. Um, the third uh, way we can do it is online via Zelle uh, to PCUB Sabbath Cathedral at gmail.com. But my friends, what in whatever manner you return to God, his tithes and offerings this morning, recognize that you are blessed because whatever you have came from him. So the Lord bless you as you do that. Let us just pray a moment. Father God, like David, my heart is filled with gratitude because I recognize that all things have come from you. You have blessed us all. We sing your praises. We recognize that in, even in this pandemic, we are blessed there, God. We thank you and we give honor and praise to your name. Bless each worshiper this morning. Bless all those who are preparing and uh, to give to your ministry right now. And we thank you for the blessings, Lord. And we look forward to even more blessings from you. Amen. Thank you, my beloved. All right.
That was a wonderful song. I want to thank Brother Smith for such a beautiful rendition. Give myself away so you can use me. This morning, I uh, <clears throat> I wrote this message three times and scrapped it and threw it away, and I'm starting again. And I, as we, I, I was thinking as we are celebrating this month's. Black History Month, I reflected on back in when I was in college, since about 1986, I used to volunteer for the United Negro College Fund. They used to have a telethon every, every holiday season. And since 1986, until they stopped doing this, this, is, this has been my practice with my fraternity. We would go and man the phones and take donations for the United Negro College Fund. And they had a slogan, and their slogan said that a mind is a terrible thing to waste. And I thought about that when I wrote this message, the state of the black mind, because I'm always trying to think about how, what state of mind am I in? But my state of mind is also the state of mind of those that are around me, my family, my community, my church. And this is a very, very powerful statement. I should think about this. A mind is a terrible thing to waste. And as I grow older and as I meditate back on uh, difficulties I had in the past when I was much younger, I realized it, it had more to do with my mindset at the time. The problem was really not that big, but my mindset was not in the right place. And even today, when I encounter difficulties, I step back and I check myself to see what is my mindset at the time. And just as I have my own mindset, my own way of thinking, my own consciousness, my people as a group 
as a community, we have what we call a collective consciousness, the way the group thinks within your family, within your uh, work area, the people you work around, even the people you live around, you will notice that neighborhoods and employ in employment places have um, a certain mindset when they walk in. This is what we do here, and uh, this is what we don't do here. So today, I want you to reflect back with me on the state of the Black mind, but not only the, the state of the Black mind, but the state of your mind. Let us pray first. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory this day. As we celebrate the end of Black History Month, would you constantly remind us, oh God, that we are great people and we have wrought great works upon this earth and you have greater things to do through each and every one of us. Take the scales from our eyes, oh God, and show us the vision that you have for each and every one of us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So I uh, had a conversation with uh, a young lady this week, and uh, we were talking about the pandemic and uh, the lockdown that we've been under for uh, for the year, last year, and I thought about it. It's been 349 days since the slogan went out, flatten the curve, 14 days to flatten the curve, 349 days. And I, and I, in this conversation said, in this last year, what have you done to improve your lot in life? During the lockdown, what have you do, do, done to improve your mindset, improve your skills? Have you used this time wisely? Have you used this time to make corrections? Or are you still hunkered down hiding from an invisible enemy. The last message that, uh, last year that when I spoke on this, I, I, I deliberately used that text that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And the last part, I never, I didn't really emphasize that much about having a sound mind. And this is what this is about. Is the black community uh, in, their, in their right mind? Are, are my in my right mind? Because I am re a reflection of my community. Is this nation in its right mind? There's a lot of things going on and there's a lot of, I call it comedy. I just sit back and watch the comedy that's going on because it's so much ridiculousness going on around the world. There's so much dysfunction. And we, if we're not careful, we will be consumed by the dysfunction that's around us. I said before, we have a collective vision and we have a collective consciousness as, as a group and as a nation. So in my conversation with the young lady, she was asking me, she asked me a question. She said to me, Carl, how is this going to end? She said, she said, I'm quite, you know, I'm quite concerned about where we're going as a country. And I said, well, what do you mean? And she said, well, you know, we're, uh, there's a lot of money being given away in the stimulus and I'm waiting for my money to come to me, you know, but can they just keep doing this forever? And I laughed 
And I looked at her and I said, this, my dear, is going to end very bad. But something new and something better will be on the other side. I want you to take a look at where we are as a nation and at where we are as a Black nation also. And we as Black people, we have to think, are we live, as we celebrate Black History Month, we like to reflect back on great things that Black people have wrought in the past. Maybe it's uh, the great inventions of Black people, maybe great Black athletes, maybe great businessmen, all the great things that have been done in the past. But are we looking to the future? Are we speaking about the future and as where do we have a vision for the future? The scripture says, where there is no vision, the people perish. And this is important because right now, there are new industries coming up. There are new industries that are popping up out of this pandemic. The old way of work is going away. Work will be done in a different way. There are new markets that are coming on. Um, many years ago, I, I spoke to everyone about the new money. The new money is going to be all digital. And I said to young people, I said, I'm me, I'm in my, close to in my retirement days, but I'm still looking towards the future. I'm still delving on what's coming up next. You, if you're younger than me, are you doing the same thing? I told my, my, my child, my, one of my children uh, the other day, this is, uh, I was talking to her about cryptocurrencies and I said, this is your technology. I, I, I laughed just a while ago. I heard a uh, senior pastor, she said, the original way when she was talking about how we, we can give our tithes and offers. I said, the original way is P.O. Box. And I laughed when, <laughs> when she said, the original way. Yes, but there is, an, and, and that, that is good, but I'm saying to you, are you looking towards the future? Is my people still looking at the past and not realizing that the new technologies for the future, we have to embrace it and we have to, in fact, be in front of it. So we have the CARES Act. There's a lot of talk about money given for vaccines and money given for small business and money given to the undocumented and student loan debt relief cancellation and universal basic income and money, 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 money is gonna be poured upon it. Right now, the bill was passed last yesterday, I believe, 1.9 trillion, nothing. It's, and people are asking, if the government can print so much money, then why do we have to pay taxes? I mean, if we have a problem, and this is the, 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 the position we are right now, is that our government, if we have a, a problem, there's one solution. Let me show you a solution. Print money all over the place. We throw money all over the place. There's a pandemic, throw some more money at it. If there, there, uh, you kids need uh, uh, debt relief, throw more money at it. You want $3,000 every month, throw more money at it. This is what it is. And my, my wife is laughing. My, my money gun is, is empty and I'm asking to reload it because this is where we're going. And, and why I'm saying that to you is very, very important because if you look back in history, when Rome was about to go down, the first thing they started to do was debase their currency. And when you see that the government is debasing their currency, you know that something new is coming. 
they already are speaking about a great reset. They are speaking about central bank digital currencies replacing our currency. We as the Black community, are we going to be ahead of the curve? Are we looking into what's coming into America? And this is the point that where is our mindset? My, my question is, where is our mindset? When I said that this is not going to end well, when you print so much money, guaranteed prices are going to go up and there's going to be a lot of heartache and pain at, at the, uh, when, we, when we're buying food and regular staples. But we know that God is going to provide for our needs. But we cannot be foolish. We have to think and have our mindset as a group and come together and say, you know, we see that the government is printing all this money. This can't end well. We as a group have to come together and make sure our economy is good. There is no reason why we should rely on any government for anything. We should not have to rely on anyone because the church and the community coming together is enough for each and every one of us. Let me, let me, um, let me read a, a text for you. Proverbs 29, 18 says, where there is no vision, the people perish. But the second half of that text in Proverbs 29, 18, it says, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. God has given us his word and he has given us his law. And when he, the scripture says the vision, he says the word vision here is refer, refer, referring to your spiritual eye, the eye we use to create our future. Visualization is the power we have to create our future. But if we don't create our future to benefit ourselves, somebody's going to create a future using us to benefit them. So, while I was writing this message, I'm going to make the shameless plug right here. And the shameless plug is for you to tune in every day to the 30 day mental diet and practice what is in the 30 day mental diet. Nancy Jeffries, the senior pastor, myself, and everyone, we work hard to get these videos out to you. And even though we are apart, we're not together, I, I'm going to make this plug because the, the, the pastor does mine for Mondays and he's doing a 30-day mental diet and also services. There's so much work being done to get our mindset to be as one. If the church is going to prosper, we all have to be in one mind. So if everyone is not on the same page as we're studying here, doing the 30-day mental diet, we can't be in one mind. If you want to be healthy, we have to have a mindset for health. If we have, want to be prosperous, we have to have a mindset for prosperity. Okay. So people say, well, Carl, everything is fine, Carl. We got rid of Trump. We got a new president. We're going to be okay. Why are you so pessimistic in your message? I am not. Actually, I am I'm quite optimistic about the future. I'm quite optimistic about our church future and uh, my, my, my family and my community's future. But sometimes I realize that we, we, we are looking in the past too much and not looking towards the future. Now, I'm going to read a text. Turn with me in your Bible to Daniel 5. You know what? I'm going to read the whole thing so that we can get context. Now, I read this text before. It's in the King James Version. It's Daniel 5. I'm going to start at chapter 1, and I'm going to go to verse 9. Okay. Belshazzar, 
the king made a great feast to a thousand of his lords and drank wine before the thousand. Belshazzar, while he tasted the wine, commanded to bring the gold and silver vessels which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple, which was in Jerusalem, that the king and his princess, his wife, and his concubines might drink therein. Then they bought the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple of the house of God, which, as, which was at Jerusalem, and the king and his princess, his wives, his concubines drank in them. They drank wine and praised the, God, the gods of gold and of silver, of brass, of iron, of wood, and of stone. The next thing that happened was a hand writing on the wall. In the same hour came forth fingers of a man's hand and wrote over against the candlestick upon the plaster on the wall of the king's palace. And the king saw the part of the hand that wrote and the countenance and his, and the king's countenance was changed and his thoughts troubled him so that the joints of his loins were loose and his knees smote one against another. The king cried aloud to bring in the astrologers, the Chaldeans, the soothsayers, and the king spake and said to the wise men of Babylon, whosoever shall read this writing and show me the interpretation thereof shall be clothed with sackcloth, with scarlet, and with a chain of gold, excuse me, about his neck, and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. Then came in all the king's wise men, but they could not read the writing, nor make known to the king the interpretation thereof. Then the king, the king Belshazzar, was greatly troubled, and his countenance was changed in him and his Lord's works were astonished. I was reading that because I was making a point that there is change in the air. And the people of, sometimes people that have a worldly vision, they cannot see the handwriting on the wall. And I'm saying to you that the changes that you see coming, a lot of them are going to be permanent changes and the new marks that are there are, 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 are there are, are going to be permanent. A lot of things, a lot of more meetings will be done by Zoom. A lot more work will be done by Zoom. Uh, you'll see a lot, maybe you'll see markets crash and maybe the, the crypto market might crash and come up or, or whatever it is. We don't know what's, but we see that there's change happening all around the world. We ourselves, as a church, has to be ready. We have to be in one mind, in one accord. Okay, so let me, let me read. In Proverbs 43, 23, it says, keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. So what I'm saying to you today in this this is just a plug. I, I said this to uh, Megan earlier. I said, this is a plug to get everyone here to share with their family, their friends, that we can have to come together in the new economy as a black race to prosper in the new economy. Okay. Some of you may be sitting around in your house just waiting for a stimulus or waiting for the politicians to say, it's okay for you to leave your house now. It's, uh, you know, you can go outside and breathe the air without uh, a face diaper, whatever it, it is. You know, the person that you're waiting for is yourself because God himself is inside of you. And he is well able to take on any challenge that you're going to face in the future. But you're going to face that future 
with a vision for yourself and a vision for your family, a vision for your community. You must face it and we must all be in one accord on our vision. Okay. I said to you before, the key part of the text in Proverbs, it says that he that keepeth the law, happy is he. I'm inviting us to come together at this point and think about where we are as a church. Have I taken this time to make changes in my life, make changes in my mindset that's going to benefit myself and my people? This is what the message is about. Am I making changes? Am I looking towards the future? Do I have a vision for the future? Am I coming together with others with a, with a vision for the future to build, make that future happen? Or am I sitting in fear still? Let me move on. God has not given you the spirit of fear. You saw, you, you heard in the, the text that I just uh, read that the king was in fear when the handwriting was on the wall. When that hand was wrote on the wall and he saw that what was on the wall, his knees shook. But when Daniel himself came to interpret that, he had no fear. Why? Because Daniel was a man of God and he walked in the law. Yeah. This is what I'm saying to you. He that keepeth the law of God, happy is he. And we're discussing the laws of God in the 30 day mental guide. So I'm going to conclude here. I'm inviting everyone under the sound of my voice to come together with the leaders of ministry. We had prayed last week and we fasted for our families, but as we're coming towards the Passover, I'm, I'm inviting you to come together with the ministry in one accord, in one mind. And we study the 30 day mental diet together. We'll keep the 10 day cleansing fast together. And we will come together at the Passover in one mind. And I will guarantee you that you will have positive changes in your life. What we need is a little consistency. Not one person over there, another person over there. We need consistency and everyone to come together in one accord. And the Lord has promised where there is two or three, gathered in his name, he will be there. I'm praying that you will come together with us. As Megan brings us out, I want, I'm praying that you'll come together and make sure you share the videos with those that need to hear that word. And God bless you as we take this challenge up together. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now is the time for us to be binded together. Amen. We thank Elder Gail for that message. Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in creation love the fellowship of king dread minds is like to that
praise the Lord. I'm at this time, I just wanted to invite you and I'd like to make an appeal to you. And I, I made the appeal earlier, but we know that some of you may be going through a lot during the last year. And the last year has been stressful for many people. Many lives were lost and many people have lost their work. And many people are not sure what direction we are going in this land. But I assure you that God is leading out. And we would like to talk with you. We would like to talk to you and you can email us. You can always call the church, just phone number. You can always send an email and one of the ministers will reach out and speak with you. But more than ever, I also say to you, when you contact us, renew your mind on a regular basis. Use the media that we have put out on the internet, on the YouTube channel, to keep your heart and your mind focused on the Lord Jesus Christ. These are the times where we need a stimulus of the Holy Spirit. That paper money that, that's been poured all over the, the, uh, the, the world will go to naught. We need a pouring out of the Spirit. And we ask you at this moment to make sure you commit yourself from this point on to be in one accord with the ministry and let us pray together. Father, we thank you and we give you thanks for your word. We know, God, that you are in control and whatsoever the future holds, you hold the future. We thank you because we know there is health, prosperity, there is peace, there is love in our future. We know, God, if we allow the Spirit to lead, He will lead us into green pastures. We want to thank you for using us to get the Word of God out. We thank you, O oh God, that we are vessels, and we thank you, O oh God, because we know that you love each and every one of us. Pour out your Spirit upon those that are listening right now. Pour out your spirit upon those that are in need right now. Grant their petitions and show them your, your grace and your love, we pray in Jesus' name. Thank you for worshiping with us today. We thank you, Gail, for that thought-provoking message. And we want to adhere to his request that we work together. I, it's time. Let's look to the Lord. Now the God of patience and consolation grant you to be like-minded one to another, according to Christ Jesus, that ye may with one mind and with one mouth glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Amen. 
We want to thank you for worshiping with us today. We had a great time together. I thought that was a timely message. We want to remind you that on February 25th was the start of our 30-day mental diet. We're inviting you to check on YouTube for updates. Link tagged in in our service postings on Facebook. March begins our focus on the high holy season of the year. And we are tuning up and getting ourselves ready to celebrate a Passover, the best one that we've had. We know that we're in this pandemic and we're separated, but through the mind of God, we're going to celebrate that Passover. And I'm praying the Lord that it will be a blessing to each and every one of us. I want you to remember to join us in the midweek, our teleconference services. We have prayer meeting on Wednesday night and our Friday evening living room meeting. It welcome, welcoming in the Sabbath. It's a welcome to the Sabbath. And we invite you to be there. The information will be on the screen. Uh, subsequently, I want us to stay tuned for some virtual announcement. And I'm looking forward to being with you again next week as we get ready for and tune up for this high holy season of the year. God bless you. And I hope to see you next week. Stay tuned for our virtual announcements, please. Good afternoon, Philadelphian family, friends, and visitors. Thanks so much for being here with us today. We are so blessed to have you worshiping with us this week. One thing we truly value at Philadelphia is community. And whether today is your first time or Philadelphia has been your church for years, truly the best way to get connected with our family and start meeting others is through our weekly prayer meetings. Our weekly prayer meetings take place each Wednesday night from 7 to 8 p.m. and are led by our senior pastor, Dolores Jeffries. To join these meetings, connect by phone at 701-802-5473, pin number 308-6058-POUND. We invite you to join us each and every Friday evening at 7 p.m. for our Welcoming the Sabbath services. To join these services, connect by phone at 701-802-5473, pin number 308-6058-POUND. Our Sabbath School adult classes begin every Sabbath morning at 10 a.m. To connect to these classes, connect by phone at 701-802-5473, pin number 308-6058-POUND. Children's Sabbath School also takes place at 10 a.m. via Zoom. The meeting ID is on the screen below. Our young people's meeting at Vespers will begin each and every Sabbath afternoon at 4.30 p.m. through 5.30 p.m. To join our young people's meeting, connect via Zoom. The meeting ID is on the screen below. Make sure to stay connected with us throughout the week online Facebook and Instagram at Philadelphia Church PCUB. For prayer requests and inquiries, connect via PCUB Sabbath Cathedral at gmail.com. Our recently added Mindful Mondays are posted each and every Monday on our YouTube channel at PCUB Brooklyn, New York. Start your day with words of encouragement from our ministerial leadership. And remember, our greatest glory is never falling, but in rising every time we fall. We're just so glad you're here. If you did come prepared to give, there are a number of different ways you can do so. You can send your tithe directly via mail to P.O. Box 642, Rockville Center, New York, 11570. Our tithe cash app is cash tag PCUB. Or you can also send your tithe electronically 
via Zell to PCUBSabbathCathedral at gmail.com. We believe God has something unique to say to you, and our hope is that you feel His love stronger today than ever before. Thanks again for being with us and enjoy the rest of the Sabbath day.